O God, be gracious to me, a sinner, and have mercy on me. Blessed is our God, now and always, and forever and ever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For heavenly peace and the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in the whole world and stability of the holy churches of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed and glorious lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God, to you, Lord, for all glory, honor, and worship are you do, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. We can't go home without the gospel because of what the gospel said. You cannot do without me anything our Lord said in the gospel. What does that mean? When I first went to the seminary, now 30 years ago, one of the first things that I did not agree with was the expression, there is no salvation outside of the church. That was a very common theme. Although the church was very weak, after the communism and all the persecutions of 70 years, that motto had stayed in people's minds, in the minds of the priests who were still left. And I was coming from a no background, so it didn't sound right to me that salvation was kind of limited to a space, to a place, to a group of people, and that it is only from there that salvation happens. But as happens to everybody, we slowly grow in our faith. Sometimes things make no sense because we are like children and we are given food that we cannot digest. St. John Chrysostom compares this maturing and the process of being given to clothing. He says, if you dress a little child with adult clothes, not only they will be funny, these are his words, but it will also be dangerous for them because they'll trip over the clothes and fall. So sometimes in our theology, we don't pay attention to what we can absorb, what we can learn, what we can actually digest as we learn things. Sometimes we become like parrots with memorized things here in the, in the book, and then we keep repeating about these things. We don't even absorb it into our hearts, in our minds, and we don't leave it. St. Paul says, if when you were children, I gave you milk, when you would have became adults or become adults, I will give you meat. How do we grow? How do we become adults? Today, in the hymn, one of the errors in the translation took my attention, and it said, you are the ladder of the ascend, and in Megan's translation, it was, you are the Jacob's letter. And I was looking into the translation that I had. It didn't have Jacob in it. It's not an error. It's just one person preferred to explain a little bit further what that letter looks like or what is, whose letter it is. So the Lent is, in a sense, that letter that we are climbing, as we have St. Uh, Climacus's letter, 
that we climb up step by step. It's not linear. I have said that many times. So what happens to us in the church is that we come and we learn and we absorb and we commune and we relate and through one another we get closer to Christ. That is what the church provides. And that is why there is no salvation in the vacuum outside of the church. Because the outside does not provide the environment in which we grow. And so Christ today says that I am the vine and you are the branches and you are grafted into me. That is another beautiful theological concept that St. Paul talks about. That the Israelites being the chosen nation were the actual vine. And then when they did not produce any fruits, they were cut and the Gentiles were grafted into the stock of the, of the, of the vine. And we now, the Gentiles, are sprouted and have many become many branches. But the Lord is warning us about ourselves too. If my chosen nation was cut and thrown aside for now, more so you will be cut and thrown if you don't produce any fruits. And the fruits are not our successes in the world. That is true. But the most beautiful fruit that we produce in the listing of the virtues, St. Paul comes, the last one, he keeps the best for the last, is love. And that also is only possible to produce within community. It is easy to love out there somebody who you don't know. It is easy to buy somebody a cup of coffee or pay somebody's toll, pay it forward. Like, you know how sometimes people go in a toll, they pay for the car behind them. They don't know who's sitting in there. Put them together for a few, two weeks and they will start pulling each other's hair. But because you don't know who that is, you easily pay for their toll and you feel good about yourself. I'm not saying don't do it. It's a great gesture to do. But what I'm trying to communicate is that the Christian love that is making us to grow is practiced within the community of brothers and sisters for whom it is harder to love one another than to love a stranger. So as we go through the land, that is what we need to do. We need to practice more of that. Practice as we grow to love more and more and more. And only then, then and only then, the church can prosper. If you got key notice, uh, strangely, I had put a quote from Charlie Chaplin in there. Did anybody read? Do you remember? Okay. No? You don't receive the online one? The paper key notice hasn't reached the homes yet, but the online one did. And Charlie Chaplin said, in order for you to do something good, you don't need any power, any authority. All you need is love. For doing evil things, you need power. So let us grow in Christ. Let us climb the divine ladder of the Jacob's ladder of Ascend. And let us pray to the Theotokos so that she intercedes for our salvation and our successful process of the land, now and forever. Amen. Thank you.